Hello everyone, this is Chatter Estop, author of the Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen Trophy Guide, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to take down Death, as well as Gazer, the mini-boss required to reach Death, uh, in about 15 to 20 minutes, and that will get you around 4 million EXP. Now there is some explaining to do, but a lot of it is pretty straightforward, so if you hate the sound of my voice like me, go ahead and mute, your, mute me and uh, watch at your own pace. I do have timestamps down in the description below if you want to know about specific parts. Now you will have to start in hard mode, meaning your current save file will have to be unnormal or easy. We'll cover that again at the end of the video. Now when you get to the Bitter Black Isle to fight both the Gazer and Death, you're going to want to be a Strider. However, that is not required for the intro. Though I myself will be playing as a Strider, you can play as any vocation you want as there is an option to change it later. Now if you look at my character there, she is quite tall and quite wide. The reason we have this is because the taller you are, the faster you will run, and the wider, heavier you are, the more you're able to carry. And though we won't be carrying much, this will allow me to stay very light the entire playthrough, meaning I will run faster and gain stamina back quicker. Excuse me. Most of these cutscenes are skippable, some of them, like this one, are not. Uh, so in the efforts of saving time, we're going to be skipping as many as possible. So this technically will not have any spoilers in it, not that this game really had a story. It's uh, along the same lines as having a drunk friend watch Lord of the Rings and then kind of give you a break, a brief rundown in about 20 minutes. Like, there's kind of something there, but for the most part it's just nonsense. So if you run away there, you actually are going to save yourself a little bit of time. <laughs> Speedrunning tactics, which you'll see. Again, you can choose any vocation you want. I'm just going to, for the sake of keeping things quick, I'm going to do Strider, because that's what I know. Uh, the very first step is to run yourself through equipment. I will cover the sprinting mechanic very quickly. Uh, you can use sprinting uh, to your heart's content, as you'll probably have a lot of stamina during this run. Uh, sprinting looks like this. And for the sake of not giving you a headache, I will not be doing that, but keep in mind that could save you a good two or three minutes per run if you really want to. So the first step is suiting up, and we're going to need to get both equipment and a few items. So when it comes to equipment, you can wear uh, anything you'd like, that's up to you. For the exception of your accessories, you're going to need barbed nails. If you have another accessory you like, you can wear it up to the point where you fight death, otherwise you will need to have barbed nails on. And I will mention that again at the end of the video. Uh, I have a the cheat clothing, which is one of the most powerful uh, sets of uh, outfits in the entire game, but you can use whatever you like. Uh, then we're going to need a few things. Uh, starting at the bottom, I'm going to bring with me uh, two wake stones, just in case. Uh, we will be using a blessed flower later, but we do not need that at the moment, and to have it on you could potentially wilt it, which we don't want. Moving up to tools... Um, Normally, you would have a strength-boosting item that looks just like this, called the Conqueror's uh, Pyrapit, which is, I believe, how that's pronounced. Um, but for the sake of showing you what that looks like to fight the Gazer without using that, and for the fact that I, I ran out of them, I, uh, I, I won't be using those. You will need some blast arrows. You can take as many as you like, but generally, three shots. Uh, you fire in uh, amounts of three. That's going to be good enough. And you don't need this, but I like to take a Life Stone. Uh, when you go to curatives, this is completely up to you how much you do and don't want to take. Uh, but I always like to have something for stamina, uh, and I like to have something for health. Now, the mushrooms you just saw me grab are very light, and they grant you a ton of stamina. I love taking those with me. Now, you see, even though I have 17.32 pounds, I'm still considered very light. So when I run away from this, uh, I'm going to be draining the minimum amount of stamina and moving at my maximum speed. So we'll be leaving the, uh, I think it's called Casardus or Casardus. Not entirely sure. Everything here has a stupid name. But uh, just to kind of go over, you will always spawn uh, anytime you start this game with five meat and five plant. They're not really useful. You can toss those out if you want. Right here we have our stamina mushroom. We have our health potion. If we go down to tools, we have our life stone for teleportation, and we have our blast arrows for killing death. Uh, and in case we die, we do have some wake stones. Keep in mind, we are also wearing barbed nails. That is the very important thing that you need. Now, 
sadly you cannot use a fairy stone this early in the game for some reason so you will have to make the journey to the encampment uh, with Rook. A uh, brief note about Rook, the pawn that follows you at the beginning, is that Rook is going to be a mage if you are a strider. Uh, if you yourself are a maid, I believe he is a fighter. Um, this is going to make it a bit harder to kill him later on because he will stop to heal you any chance he gets or he will heal himself if you weren't hurt because he always gets hurt. Uh, so if you are not playing as a strider, you won't have to deal with that. Otherwise, I would advise getting rid of him during the Cyclops fight that is coming up. Uh, there are about two good spots where you can reasonably kill your pawns because, uh, in case you didn't know, uh, this run is all about experience, and the fewer pawns you have, the more experience you'll get. In fact, every empty pawn slot will give you an additional 25% experience, up to a total of 75%. Additionally, we are playing on hard mode for uh, double experience, and we will be using a blessed flower later on for uh, another double of our experience. Now, I will be taking a pawn with me, but there's a pretty good reason for this. When your pawn is with you, uh, or any pawn for that matter, uh, if you have a level, d level difference between you, you're going to have a little bit of an effect with your experience. Uh, and it caps out at 25. So if there are two levels ahead of you, then you're going to be taking 2% less experience. If there are eight, then you'll be taking eight less. If there are seven levels beneath you, you'll get an additional 7%, and this caps out at 25 and negative 25. So because my main pawn is less than 25 level, or more than 25 levels beneath me, I won't be losing any experience by taking him with, because though I am missing out on the 25% extra experience for not having a pawn with me, I'll be getting another 25 for having a low level pawn with me. So it evens out and I get more experience for my pawn. You don't have to do this, you can easily solo it and he won't really be that helpful. Now that we've defeated the Cyclops, uh, it is faster to crawl up the Cyclops, but it's, it's not required and if he grabs you that can lose a lot of time. So make sure to throw him that way because if he land, oh, I didn't get the ocean. If you see that little yellow skull, that means he's in a dying state, but he did not fall out of the map. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky please, toss, please. but you, you can just ignore him. Uh, no one else seems to care, so they're just going to leave him there. <laughs> Moving back in here, uh, we're going to come to a bit of a lull. Yeah, I'm trying to think about what information I have and have not covered. Uh, there's kind of a, a lot to this run. So this was originally, uh, this idea was found at a different video by the man who did the uh, Xbox Achievement Guide. I had to remember what they were called. Now he did a pretty good video. Uh, it's not very optimized. He even does a few missions um, that you don't have to do. Um, we're just going to walk past him. You don't need to do that. He will teleport you, but you can just walk out. Uh, you do not need to talk to uh, Mercedes and defeat the Hydra you can immediately leave the camp um, and the Bitter Black Isle will be unlocked to you. You just have to unlock your pawn. That's as far as into the game as you need to go. Additionally, doing it this way um, will stop the forced dialogue. Normally, if you beat the Hydra and walk out, you'll be told that your cousin is missing and you uh, are given the quest to go find her. Uh, it takes a few seconds, but this skips it. Additionally, uh, if you accept after you kill the Hydra, if you accept Mercedes' quest, the merchant will talk to you about his own quest, and these things just waste maybe a combined six seconds, but it, it's just a quality of life improvement. Uh, so at this point, um, normally you would have uh, your main pawn with you, and if you didn't get rid of Rook at that cliffside, you'll notice that he is now gone. Uh, you would have him with you too. That's fine. There's another part in the run where you can get rid of both pawns. I won't be getting rid of my pawn, but I will show you where it is and how to do it. Uh, keep in mind that to head to the Bitter Black Isle, you will need to uh, be in nighttime, so we will have to come talk to the merchant and make it nighttime. You can do this earlier uh, when you pick up your equipment, and it's about six one half dozen the other. You know, completely up to you. I like to do it later because this will also refill my stamina. 
uh, in case you run out, because though I have a lot of stamina, that's because I'm leveling up as Strider, which will give you a lot of stamina. You might have run out and then have to walk here. Again, you can go faster by doing this. Uh, I'm not doing that because that's very annoying to look at. Uh, like I was saying earlier, uh, before I actually had to comment about the, the run itself, this is based off of uh, another video that exists, but it's at a very low uh, quality. And I, I mean that in a pixelization sense. And in a few parts, it's impossible to watch because of some kind of compression error. At the same time, nothing is really explicitly explained. And there's kind of, as you can tell by the rapid fire explanation that I've had, there's quite a bit to cover. Uh, now that we're in the Bitter Black Isle, we're going to be moving through this place twice, so you're going to have to get good at avoiding these wolves. They have a bit of a random pattern, but generally, if you jump, you can get past them. Uh, don't worry about your pawn, but do worry about the snakes here. You're going to want to go left and then right to dodge those two. If they hit you, it's game up. No, if they hit you, it's fine. It's just annoying. Um, if you make it through here, you can keep running while death appears, but be aware that your camera will jerk back to death. Uh, at the end. Uh, your pawn may die here. I had that happen to me all of once. But keep in mind that that is something that can potentially happen to you. Uh, coming to this section, if you talk to this man, he will appear later, which might save you a trip. But you can, for the most part, just ignore him. That is the man I'm talking about. All right, coming down here is generally where you would kill your pawns. Uh, once we go through this door, we will enter a hallway, and at the end of the hallway will be a pit. Now, if you have Rook and he is a mage, uh, he will start healing himself back there, and you'll have to come back and grab him or wait for him to catch up. Uh, as no one is healing anyone, I can just grab him, and I can toss him over. I don't want to do that because I want him to be with me during the boss fight, so I'm going to let him tag along. Uh, be careful not to let them hit you because they will knock you down. It's a bit of a stun. Uh, going through this cave, you will be accosted by some uh, bats here, but you do not have to attack them. In fact, you do not have to attack anything except the gazer and death. Uh, now, what we're trying to do right here is get the void key to go to the area we actually want to go to. So we'll have to go into this room and climb to the very top. Uh, your stamina will probably be much lower than mine, as I am near the top of the leveling system. So just remember to refill your stamina, because this is not a place you want to stop. As you'll see, the mushrooms, very light, and they give me quite a bit of stamina. There is a neat place to collect them uh, later on when we're fighting the gazer, and I'll point that out when we get to it. This man right here will throw a fireball at you, and... It's about a 50-50 if you're able to dodge him or not. Uh, if you are using a mage at this point, because remember, you do not have to play a strider uh, if you don't want to. Or if you have double jump, you can actually just run up the spiral uh, right beneath me. But uh, I'm not going to do that, just for the sake of uh, doing what I practiced. Now, once you grab the void key... Um, which you'll see new. If you see new under special, that means that you have the void key. You can use a life stone to go back to the beginning of the island. If you do not want to use a life stone, you can just run back to the center area. Uh, it's completely fine, uh, but I think this is a little bit faster, and it also allows me to rest. Now, when you go to talk to her for the first time, uh, it will initiate a little cutscene, which you can skip. So I'll go ahead and rest just to kind of top myself off, get my stamina back. Uh, and then I will talk to her to get the blessed flower. We go to right special. Yes, thank you. So I will carry that on me and you'll see I now have wheel and that's W-E-A-L. If you look at the bottom left to the right of my health bar, you'll see a little lucky charm. That means I am now earning... Uh, twice the amount of experience and this does stack with the hard mode and lack of pawns again as you'll see with my pawn he is less than 25 or he is more than 25 levels below me so he's um, going to give me an extra 25 percent even though he's here uh, pawn uh, your pawn at least will gain a substantial 
uh, EXP bonus if he's beneath you because the devs really wanted you to be around the same level. So if he's above you by adventuring with other people, then uh, he won't level up as fast. And if you let him die, didn't use him, so he didn't level up as much as you, well, then he'll start getting a lot more experience. That's just a fun fact. It's, it's not really relevant to the run. Um, additionally, when you go past the wolves, you can run through the boxes on the left and hop down. You will take some damage, but it is slightly faster. Now, if you ran... Uh, down from there, I pointed at my TV like you could see me, uh, then you'll need to talk to him to get your blessed flower. Uh, as you can see right here, you can manage your stored items just like that. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to have wheel. Now, there are other items that will grant wheel. Uh, in fact, I think there's, there's just the one. Um, but blessed flower is the easiest one to get because if you have one then you have all the blessed flowers you're ever going to need. These do normally wilt in one game day, but as long as you put it back in your storage before that day is up, it will be completely fine and you can use this as much as you want. Seeing as how we don't spend one in-game day in the Bitter Black Isle, uh, you can <laughs> use this as much as you want for the tactic. You'll notice that earlier when I went to grab it, I had eight of them. That's because I thought they would be used, but they do not. Additionally, I should point out that anything you collect while you are in this run will carry over next time you attempt it. So when you kill the Gazer, for example, if he drops a piece of gear or something that you'd like, feel free to pick it up. You'll be wasting a little bit of time, but it's not an issue. Now right here, you can go right, but I like to go left. I think it's a tiny bit faster. Uh, where these Saurians are is a bit... Uh, hit or miss, um, or a bit random, I should say, but they're generally not an issue. All right, and we made it all the way to the first gazer fight. Now, I'm not going to pick any up because I don't... Oh, sorry, I was not keeping an eye on my stamina. But right there, you will see one mushroom there and another mushroom right there. Picking those up, uh, those are the mushrooms that I've been using. They are incredibly helpful. Now normally at this point you could go down to tools and use your conqueror's uh, pripyat or parapet, one of the two, and you could use up to four to bolster your strength, but I want to show you what it looks like when you don't have that. So if you jump over here, you have just enough to grab him uh, if he doesn't move back, but he did move back just a tiny bit, uh, and I did not max out that jump, so I did fall. But it's not too much of an issue because I didn't buff my damage. He's not going to die uh, before he bites me out of his mouth, which you'll see. There it is, and he's not going to drop me there, but he will drop me right after, so I'm going to go ahead and save him the trouble. This is why we also have some healing items. Now, when you kill him, you will level up, likely. Uh, I don't think it's possible to kill him and not level up. So you'll get full health by the end of this anyways. Uh, strangely enough, you don't get full stamina. Now you can try to jump back in his mouth, but as you see, he's mouthing along some kind of spell. This means that four tentacles are going to pop up. Uh, you can kill him before he does this if you have three or four conquerors. Uh, I'm tired of saying that word. Uh, which I did not use, but even then, sometimes he can decide that he's not about that. And he'll just say, well, I'm going to bite down anyways. So I wanted to show you what to do if this does happen. Uh, once you slice him up a little bit, eventually he will make some kind of animation. You'll see that in a second. There it is. You'll hear that little chime. And now you can come and finish him off. It's not a very hard boss. I've never died to him. Uh, you probably won't ever die to him. Um... And even if you do, this is why we do have wake stones. Uh, you can take as many wake stones as you want. You might want to take a few more when it's your first time. Now, like I, uh, over here is where he always seems to drop his things. Now you'll see, oh, he just dropped some loot there. You can skip right past this, but I always like to pick it up. Sure, it adds a few seconds, but you do get something nifty. Now you'll notice that while I only leveled up just uh, one or two levels, my pawn seemed to level up, I think... I want to say six. I wasn't exactly looking. That's because they get a massive boost to their EXP. 
All right, so here's the part where death comes into play. Now, at this point, you should make sure that you are wearing the two barbed nails, which you'll see right here with the armor and plus. That means you're wearing two of them. At the same time, you should equip your blast arrows. Now, if you are missing any of these, or you notice, oh, I don't have wheel on anything, you can go through this gate, up those stairs, and you can talk to the lady. Uh, and she will allow you to manage everything in your inventory, so it's not a problem. Now, going into this room, it does not always save. For example, it didn't save right here. So we'll make our own save right here because death does not always go down on the first hit or the first try, so you might have to end yourself. If you have the God's Bane, you can quick retry that way, but I like to just jump to my death. So we are going to use five fold flurry to launch five arrows at once, and these are blast arrows. So death goes down, and we will see my rank increase right there. I believe I'm, yep, infinity means that you have reached level 200, and there's the trophy. Uh, for reaching 200 if that's what you were looking for. So normally what you would do in this situation, uh, you don't have to leave the room, I, I just like to, just, just to be safe. But you would go into options and you'd have to change this down to normal mode. Uh, then when you quit out to the main menu, uh, you can now restart hard mode and repeat this process as much as you want. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm level 200 now, and I have the video guide, so there's no reason for me to do that. But I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will be linking the original video down in the description and in a pinned comment. So if you found this video, please help the or please help support the person who found it to begin with the route. Uh, thank you for watching, and. Uh...